watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6 this Saturday evening. I'm Ben Dennis. Before we get to your top story, a check on that brutal heat that we've been feeling the past few days. Scott Sumner has what the days ahead will bring. Scott, I'm hoping those temps start. Yeah, the humidity will go down just a little bit tomorrow here, Ben, but the heat's going to be sticking around. We have a heat advisory noted here in all the counties shaded in orange. This will run to 8 o'clock here, so another couple of hours. We've had heat indices exceeding that triple-digit mark across the area, not just inland, but right along the bay, too, where an excessive heat warning is in for both Anne Arundel County, Calvert County, and St. Mary's County, where the heat indices feels like it's 103 to 107 degrees, kind of a little unusual in that regard being closer to the water. As a matter of fact, uh, right now the temperature in the district is 95. The heat index, it feels like it's 102 under partly cloudy skies across the region. Now we'll see those temperatures fall, but not fall off too much. It'll go through the 90s into the 80s and eventually into the upper 70s here as we get in towards the wee hours of the morning, say around 5 or 6 o'clock. We'll stick around. I'll let you know what temperature is going to be like for Sunday and beyond with a full seven day forecast. Ben? We'll see you in just a bit, Scott. Thank you. Tonight, a Prince George's County community is mourning the loss of three standout high school football teammates, all who went on to play college ball, one just drafted to the NFL. Minnesota Vikings Kyrie Jackson as well as Isaiah Hazel and AJ Litton were killed in a crash at Upper Marlboro overnight. DC News Now's Dave Laval joins us from Wise High School where the three played. Dave, you spoke to coaches and administrators about this devastating loss. Yeah, it's been just about as difficult a day as you can imagine. This is the field where Kyrie Jackson and his teammates helped guide the Pumas to three straight state football titles that started in 2015. Maryland State Police said the crash happened around 315 this morning on northbound Route 4 and Presidential Parkway. The preliminary investigation found 23 year old Corey Klingman of Upper Marlboro slammed into the Dodge Charger that carried Jackson, Isaiah Hazel and Anthony A.J. Litton Jr. Police said Klingman may have sped at the time of the crash, which also involved a third car. No one in that car or Klingman suffered any serious injuries. Charges are pending. Jackson graduated from Oregon, Hazel from Maryland, and Litton was all set to play at Bowie State this fall after stops at Florida State and Penn State. We spoke to their head coach today during that amazing run by the Pumas. The Lawn Parish called it a hard and emotional day for everyone. Me in general, I'm just remembering all of the good things that each one of those young men that I had the opportunity to coach and, and guide and lead and try to give guidance to um, all the good conversations and, and the things we shared towards each, for each other. Um, The owners of the Vikings released a statement that expressed their sadness at the death of Kyrie Jackson. They also said it was clear he was dedicated to being a tremendous person who made a positive difference in people's lives. Meanwhile, the athletic director at Wise told us they are planning a memorial service for the three former players. Plus, next season will be dedicated to their memories. We're live in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Dave Laval. DC News Now. Just a tragedy indeed, Dave. Thank you. Staying in Maryland, fire officials in Prince George's County say that a car crashed into this house and started a small fire in Chillum. Officials responded to the crash on Anger Road around 430 this morning. Crews were able to rescue all residents from that home by a ladder. No injuries were reported. In the district, we're told that two firefighters, meantime, were hurt in an apartment fire overnight in Northeast. Officials say the fire broke out on Saratoga Avenue around 2.30 this morning. Those firefighters had non-life-threatening injuries. One resident was left without a home. And in Montgomery County, police say that a three-year-old's death in Rockville is under investigation. Reports came in for a missing boy near Elmcroft Court around noon yesterday. It's there police say they found the child in the neighborhood pool. He died at the hospital. Police do not suspect foul play. That investigation is, of course, ongoing. Developing right now, Prince George's County police are investigating a triple shooting that critically hurt a child during a 4th of July neighborhood celebration. DC News Now's Yamarisa Say talked to people who live nearby. 
Neighbors tell us the shooting happened during an annual 4th of July block party. There was about 50 kids around, almost 100 people having a great time. Organizers say they have this event every single year over the past 20 years, and they've never had an issue. And now a little boy is in critical condition. Everybody was having a good time until, until, until that incident happened. Lamont Colbert has lived on Akron Street for decades, and every year he attends the annual 4th of July block party, but this year was different. I throw them in front of us, so everybody start running down here. My brother walked around, asked him. He said, um, and we, they were shooting, shooting them up there. French Georgia's County Police say they believe two people started shooting at someone else, and there was an exchange of shots. Three people were shot. One of those victims, a little boy who was now in critical condition. Messed up. Really, really messed up real bad. Two other adults were also shot. One was taken to the hospital. The other was grazed by a bullet. They're both expected to be okay. In this statement, Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Brayboy said in part, this must stop. These senseless acts of violence have no place in our community, and we cannot and will not tolerate it any longer. Our children deserve to grow up in a safe environment free from the fear of violence. County leaders say guns are the problem, and they're urging anyone with information to speak out. Our community have a right to enjoy together. They had a right to enjoy coming together tonight as families. They turn violent when someone brings a gun, and so we have got to get these guns off the street. As of right now, police have no suspects or a motive, but they're urging if anyone has any information to come forward. For now, reporting in Marlow Heights, I'm Yamar Sase, DC News Now. Our thanks to Yamari tonight. A reminder, DC is hosting world leaders next week for the NATO summit. It happens Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at the Washington Convention Center. Drivers can expect roads sidewalk closures nearby, as well as the Federal Triangle area and near the White House. Some of those changes start today. Closures fully in place by Monday. It comes as NATO leaders vow to provide Ukraine with weapons for another year, but take NATO membership for the war-torn country off the table. More support to Ukraine will be our most urgent task. We are trying to move them closer to the alliance. Here's what's going to be closed, so make your plan to avoid backups. You can see near the Mellon Auditorium and Convention Center, we've got more information from police at dcnewsnow.com. Metro, they are also making changes to their service next week for the NATO summit. They'll close Federal Triangle Station Tuesday. They will also close Mountain Vernon Square Station starting 11 a.m. on Tuesday through 5 a.m. on Friday. The summit will also impact bus routes because of road closures. All right, DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Overnight, President Biden doubling down that he is staying in the race to be the Democratic Party's nominee for president. After last week's poor debate performance and some Democrats saying that he should bow out, the president sat down with ABC News late last night, rejecting any calls that he take a medical screening to show voters he's up to serve another four years and defeat Donald Trump in November. Biden insists the debate performance was a bad episode, he says, and not a sign of any serious condition. Well, just today, another Democrat in Congress called on Biden to step out of the race. That's Congresswoman Angie Craig of Minnesota. She says it's the debate performance and Biden's, quote, lack of a forceful response afterward that she thinks the president can't effectively campaign and win. This also comes as Virginia Democratic Senator Mark Warner has reportedly talked to Senate colleagues whether they should ask Biden to leave the race, according to the Associated Press. That was first reported by the Washington Post. To Loudoun County, Virginia, a nonprofit serving thousands in the special needs community faces an uncertain future. The Ark of Loudoun runs school, therapeutic, and fitness programs in Leesburg. But leaders say the trustees of the land where the Ark operates are forcing the nonprofit to sign a lease that would end operations there. Northern Virginia reporter Haley Mylon has the latest. The therapies and education for so many kids and adults hang in the balance. The ARC has two schools for special needs students, therapeutic centers, and so much more. The Leesburg campus is owned by the Paxton Trust, and trustees are offering the ARC a new lease that would essentially shut down operations in two years. Trustees aren't even given a reason for this, though, and they're not providing comment to DC News Now. ARC CEO Lisa Maxwell says the ARC has asked the trust to sell the land or to donate it, but it won't. She says the organization is in a bind because fully relocating programs would take about five years. Maxwell emphasized to me how many people are impacted. We have students that come from West Virginia, from Washington, D.C., from Shenandoah County, Virginia, and from all points in between. 
We have families that count on our preschool and our, our clinic in order to be able to get the early intervention services that they desperately need. And Max tells me she's confident that the ARC will find a solution to all of this and there won't be a disruption in services. I reached out to trustees to get answers about what they would like to do with the land, but they didn't provide comment. In studio, I'm Haley Bylon, DC News Now.